What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to get set up with the new emulators that have been released. Uh, we have an NES emulator, a Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive emulator and a Game Boy Advanced emulator that have all been released in the past few days. And the Game Boy Advanced emulator has no, uh, or has all the ROMs on it. So it's just a simple case of installing it, running it no problems there. The other ones are a bit more complicated because they come with no ROMs pre-installed uh, for legal reasons and for those same legal reasons I can't show you where to go to download the ROMs but I can show you if you already have ROMs I can show you how to install them uh, to get to you know actually use these package files to run your ROMs. So that's what we're going to be covering in this video. So the NES emulator and the Mega Drive emulator don't have any ROMs on them. Uh, so basically what we have to do is extract the uh, contents of these package files and put the ROMs on there and recompile them back into a package file again. Um, and that's pretty much it. The Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive emulators, that's all you have to do with that one. The NES comes in two package files. There's an installer package file that you have to put the ROMs on and then you basically overwrite that package file with the emulator package file once you have uh, installed the ROMs. Okay, so let's go ahead and get on with it. So first thing we're gonna do is create a blank folder somewhere on your desktop uh, where you're gonna extract the package file to. So go ahead and open up the fake package tools and run Orbis pub check. All the links you'll need will be in the description. You're gonna want to go ahead and grab the NES installer package file and drag that into the image list or click add image and browse for it. Then we're gonna go ahead and click extract files, enter all zeros as the passcode, and then click extract. Select all files and directories, and then select the output folder. So for me, that's the extracted package file folder I made. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click start, and that will extract the entire contents of the package file to that directory. So we've got image zero and SE zero. You wanna go into SE0, copy everything that's in there, and then go into image zero, SCE system, and paste all of that into this folder. And from there, you can basically delete the SC0 folder. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the image folder. Now this is where the PlayStation 2 ISO is located. Uh, if you have WinRAR, you can just right click and extract the files here uh, with WinRAR. If you don't have WinRAR set to defaultly uh, open ISO files, you can right click on it and select either open with WinRAR or open with and select WinRAR or choose another app and select WinRAR to open it. Uh, so I'm just going to right click and extract all the contents into this directory and get rid of the original ISO. And from here you can see we've got our ROMs folder which is currently blank. There's nothing in there. So what we're going to do is get your ROMs. So I've got the some NES ROMs to test right here. And I'm gonna just copy them into the ROMs folder, just like that. And then we need to recompile this back into a PlayStation 2 ISO. And to do that, we're gonna use CD Gen PS2 version three. Make sure it is version three. Again, it'll be linked in the description. So we're gonna open this up, drag all of these items into here into this window and then click on image, select the image zero image folder and go ahead and save the ISO. So you wanna rename it first to disk zero one, which is the same name as the original ISO uh, and then change the save as type to ISO instead of bin and then click save. It should say the boat arrived at the port if everything went successfully. Can close out of that and we now have our disk01.iso with all of those files in there all of our roms are in there so we're all good so then we can just delete all the other extracted files so that we just have our disk01.iso in the image folder so now we're basically ready to recompile this into a package file so we're going to open gen gp4 browse for this image zero folder so browse for the image zero folder then generate the gp4 file and save it on just save it in the same directory so there it is we've got our gp4 file and then we can basically turn this back into a package file with the fake package tools and because we're building a package file for the ps2 emulation in the ps4 you want to rename orbis-pub 
uh, dash cmd to orbis dash pub dash cmd dash original or something like that. Just call it a different name and then rename the ps2 one to orbis dash pub dash cmd dot exe. From there we can open orbis pub gen. So file open and then select the gp4 file. And then we need to go to command project settings package change storage type from digital only max 50 to digital and bd max 50 and then you can change the application type to freemium app and then click ok and then build the package file so we're going to build this and there we go so that's it done i should also mention that there can be an issue with the fake package tools if you're using a newer version where it renames the keystone file so that when you build the package file and you try and run it it just black screens and crashes so make sure you're using the one i put in the description which is an older version of the fake package tools which doesn't have that issue so if you are having that issue then download the one i have in the description and use that to build your package files we now have our package file and get rid of that so we now have this package file right here which is our nes installer package file Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the Sega Mega Drive emulator. So again, I'm gonna open up the fake package tools. Uh, we're gonna do Orbis pub check. We're gonna drag in our Mega Drive package file. We're gonna extract it, enter all zeros, click extract, select all files and directories. We're gonna grab the path of our folder and we're gonna extract it. There we go, extracted. We're gonna grab all the files inside SC0 and put them inside SC system. Get rid of the SC0 folder. We're gonna extract our disk 01.iso, open the ROMs folder, grab my Sega Genesis ROMs, copy them in. And there we go and then get rid of this disk01.iso, recompile all of these files back into an ISO again. So image, calling this uh, disk01.iso, and that should be it. Get rid of these files. Now we just have disk01 left in here. And we rebuild the package file using gen gp4. Just grab the path and generate the gp4 file, save the gp4 file. And finally, we go ahead and build our package file with Orbis pub gen. Open the GP4 file, go to command, project settings, package, change this to digital and BD, change this to freemium app, and build our package file. It takes a bit longer because I've got quite a few more ROMs on there. And there we go, that's just the one kilobyte file we can delete. Okay, so now we have both of our package files with ROMs installed. So now all we have to do is go ahead and install these on our PS4. Basically, I'm going to use the remote package installer to install these just because it's going to be faster uh, than installing with, it with a USB, especially because the Game Boy Advanced emulator with the ROMs already on it is about 5 gigs or 4 gigs. So it's just going to be easier. But obviously, what you're going to want to do is open up the WebKit exploit, run HEN version 1.8, and then install the package files. You can either use the remote package installer or you can put them on a USB stick on the root of a USB stick, making sure it's FAT32 format or XFAT format, and then you can install them that way through the debug settings. But just for quickness, I'm gonna use the remote package installer, at least to do the Game Boy ones. You actually do have to use the USB to install the NES package files uh, because you have to overwrite the package file, which, um, which you can't do with the remote package installer. So what we're going to do is run our little package sender. Again, I've already done a video on the remote package installer. So if you're confused, check that video. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and install 
this one, which is the NES installer first. So there we go, that starts installing. Just gonna wait until that's done. There you go, ready to use. So that's the installer right there for NES. So I'm gonna close it, reopen the remote package installer again. And then I'm gonna grab this package file, which is the Sega Genesis one. I'm gonna drag that onto the install package. And there we go, that adds to downloads. It's just installing right there, as you can see. Still going. Again, this one shouldn't take long. There you go, done. So I can close this now. And we now have our Sega Mega Drive, or Sega Genesis emulator. Then finally, I'm gonna run it one more time for the Game Boy Advanced emulator, which I have uh, where is it? That's it right here, this one here. That already has the ROMs on it. Install package. Starts installing. If we minimize this, you can see that we're downloading four gigs in about 30 seconds, which would be a lot slower if I was using the USB method. Okay, while that's downloading, so basically while we're waiting for that, we'll go ahead and put the NES emulator on our USB drive in the root of the USB. The reason we have to install this one using USB stick is simply because it does, it needs to overwrite the installer package file. So once we install the ROMs, we have to, to overwrite it with the actual emulator package file and the remote package installer, uh, just by default, it won't overwrite. Uh, so we're gonna have to install it using the USB. So we're going to put that on a USB, plug it into the PS4. Okay, so we're on the PS4 here. We've got our emulators installed. So let's go ahead and set up the NES one because that's the most awkward one to install. The other ones you can just run and basically run your ROM straight off the bat now. But this one's a bit more complicated. So we have to run the NES installer first. We actually have to copy all the ROMs to another uh, directory before we're able to actually overwrite this with the emulator itself. So it launches us into the file browser here. We press circle to CDFS, press circle on that. And then we've got our ROMs folder. We press circle on that. Press X on all the ROMs till you've selected them all. And then press R1, I believe. Yeah, R1. And then press uh, circle on copy and then press triangle to go up directory, triangle again, go to the SC0 folder, press circle on that, and then basically you want to press uh, R1 again and press circle on paste, and that will paste all of your NES games into this directory. As you can see, I've already got them copied, so, you know, if I do this, I don't know, hopefully, okay, I thought it would say, you've already got them installed, do you want to overwrite? But guess it doesn't do that, it just installs them anyway. But yeah, basically you just want to paste them all into this directory. Uh, because I already have installed them before, they're already in there. So yeah, I think it just skipped them all because they're already installed. So give that time to copy all your ROMs over. Once they're all in that directory, you can basically exit out and close the ROM NES installer. And now you can overwrite that. So by going on to the debug settings, game package installer, and installing the RetroArch NES package file from the USB, and then you'll get this message saying that the content's already installed. Do you want to overwrite? Say yes, uh, which is why we couldn't use the remote package installer for that. And that will go ahead and overwrite the package file and install the actual emulator package instead. And that's it, we now have that all set up and installed as well. So now we have RetroArch, we've got our Game Boy Advanced emulator and our Mega Drive slash Genesis emulator. So let's go ahead and run the NES one. We'll actually be able to run a game here. So PlayStation 2. So for this one, scroll up and down using D-pad. Uh, you wanna press circle on content circle on MC0, which is where we installed our ROMs, and then all the ROMs basically show up in here. So let's try run Mario Bros. 
quick NES circle and there you go the game runs perfectly fine by the looks of it yep there we go jump I can use the d-pad to scroll along and the game works all right so that is the NES emulator so let's go ahead and have a look at some of the other ones go ahead and close this uh, we can run the Game Boy Advanced emulator remember this one already has ROMs preloaded preloaded on there I'm still not going to put a direct download link to it though just in case but I will put a link to the uh, forum post I found it on um, so CDFS we go in there uh, actually do we yeah we do <laughs> Yeah, so you go into CDFS, and then the ROMs folder's in here, and then all the pre-installed ROMs are right here. So let's just do Ace Combat Advanced. I never had a Game Boy Advanced, so I have literally no idea. Like, I'm not familiar with any of the games that are on here. 2005. Didn't think the Game Boy Advanced was... I thought it was older than that. Okay, start. New game. Novice. Definitely novice. <laughs> Can I skip this? Trying to get it to actually get into the game here. Oh. Hey, there we go. Still can't control it yet. Oh, there it is. Alright, there we go. So, you can hold down X to fire. Circle to fire missiles. Game works pretty well. It's pretty smooth. So that's the Game Boy Advanced emulator. So let's go ahead and try the Sega Genesis emulator. We need to make sure this works because this is another one we actually added the ROMs to and recompiled you know, the package file. So hopefully this will run as well. PlayStation 2. And it runs. So you've got to get through this disclaimer. But after that, we should be able to load our ROMs. All right, there we go. X to continue. We go to ROMs list. And all the ROMs we installed now show up here. So let's install a, a good old classic like uh, Sonic the Hedgehog or something like that. Let's try and get the original one. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. No, where's the first one? Okay, here we go. Sonic the Hedgehog. Loading ROM. And there we go, it runs. 1991 all right there we go so the game runs there's a little actual frame rate counter in the bottom left hand corner as well so it's showing that it's running pretty much at 60 fps with slight drop slight drops down to sort of 56 57 54 pretty unnoticeable though uh, you're not really going to notice any of the drops it's running running very smoothly so yeah, remember these are all emulators that were made for, uh, you know, exploited PlayStation 2s, I believe. And now they have been ported to run on PS4 through the PS2's emulation. And they run pretty damn fine. And uh, this is... The, like, even the RetroArch emulator for the NES one, that's the PS2 RetroArch. It's not related, I don't think, to the... The new RetroArch that's been developed for natively for the PS4, uh, which is you know probably going to be more like the one that's on the Switch, which will hopefully have more cores than just NES. So yeah, anyway guys, that is how you go ahead and get your ROMs installed and get those emulators installed. Hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video. Thank you.